The South Korean Unification Ministry's latest white paper uh, declares the Sunshine Policy a failure. The Sunshine Policy, set up under former President Kim Dae-jung, was designed to encourage North Korea to change its behavior through uh, friendly actions, through economic assistance. The Unification Ministry has said that this has been a failure, that the North Koreans have not changed in their behavior, the North Korean population is no better off, and North Korea remains, in effect, a threat to South Korea. As the South Koreans are reviewing their North Korean policies, uh, the, the North Koreans appear to be ramping up for a, another nuclear test, or at least making it appear that that's what they're doing. There are increasing reports from the region that there's activity at North Korea's nuclear test site, and this is raising concerns that Pyongyang is going to carry out its third test. The North Koreans have a reputation of raising the stakes before they re-enter negotiations. What they will do is they will use that to shape the discussions and shape the sense of, of immediacy. It brings people into the negotiations in a way where you want to deal with the immediate issue of the nuclear test and other issues that are long-standing maybe take a second, second place. The North Koreans gain some benefits from going back to the status quo before they have to start stepping down from there. As the North Koreans really try to solidify the new leadership, uh, the, there's always a push for some grand and bold action to, to make it clear who's in charge. When Kim Jong-il came to power, there was the Tape Dong launch. With Kim Jong-un, it very well may be a nuclear test just to show that from the beginning he is strong and he's tough. From the South perspective, they're looking at uh, starting to take over security responsibilities for the peninsula from the United States. You have changes in that dynamic with the U.S. defense relationship, where really the two Koreas are, are re-looking at each other. In North, you have the leadership transition underway. In the South, we've really moved beyond uh, some of the past types of governments considered pro-North Korean. But also you have a new pressure on both Koreas. Uh, the Chinese have become much more uh, assertive in their political behavior and even in their uh, military behavior in the region. Japan is starting to uh, wake up, it seems, uh, feeling some threats from China, feeling some threats from Russia. The United States is re-engaging in the region. And what happens when you have these large powers coming and pressing against each other in the Pacific region, very often where it all overlaps is the Korean Peninsula. And so in Seoul and in Pyongyang, they're feeling this increasing pressure, this increasing sense of concern, what historically they would have called the, the minnow between whales.